what's up students hope you're having the best day of your life today today we have the law of conservation momentum but this time guys in 2d all right so in two dimensionals so we're going to do three examples today and each example is going to get progressively more difficult and a little bit more different all right so just bear with me guys and feel free always pause the video if you need to after i propose the question see if you can solve it on your own and then you can go back and see exactly how I did it. All right, guys, so in this example, we're going to have a 500 kilogram cart that's traveling 20 meters per second due north. I'm going to draw this car right here. It is mass equal to 500 kilograms, and it is moving with a speed equal to 20 meters per second. And it is going to collide with another car that's traveling due west and the mass of that car is also equal to 500 kilograms and the velocity of this car is a little bit faster at 30 meters per second. And I wanna know if these two carts come together and they stick together forming a total inelastic collision, what is gonna be the velocity of the system just after impact? Okay, so this is two dimensions, but it's a little bit nicer because it is at 90 degree angle. So what we're gonna see is there's gonna be this resultant momentum. Using our parallelogram method, we will see that there's gonna be this resultant momentum up here. And that's kind of what I wanna to use to solve for. If I look at P equals MV for each one of these carts, I see that at 220 times 500, this cart is going to have a momentum equal to 10,000 kilogram meters per second. And this cart down here is gonna have 500 times 30. That's gonna be equal to 15,000 kilograms meters per second. So if I want to find out the resultant, this R, I know that I can use A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So that the resultant momentum C is really just the square root of A squared plus B squared. So when I do that math and I substitute in, I say that I have 10,000 squared plus 15,000 squared, I have a resultant momentum that is now going to be equal to 18,027 kilogram meters per second. But that's not what the question asks. They want to know velocity, okay? So what I want to do now is I want to look at the momentum of the whole system, and that's going to be equal to the mass of the whole system times the resultant velocity. So what I just found is I just found 18,027. That is gonna be equal to the total mass now, M1 plus M2, right? That's the total mass of the system. So we have 1,000 now kilograms. Once again, that's 1,000 because the cars stick together forming one mass. And then we could find out the velocity of that. So when I have, when I divide both sides by a thousand, I could find out the final velocity just after impact is going to be 18 meters per second. All right, and that's how we're going to solve for two carts that collide at a 90 degree angle. We're going to find the resultant, we're going to make sure we have our resultant, and then we are going to plug it in to solve for one of these two unknowns. Let's take a look at another example. All right, guys, so here we have two objects that are going to collide and the last piece of given information is I'm going to say M1 is coming down at 50 degrees from the y-axis is going to collide with another mass M2 that is traveling directly along the x-axis and after this collision point right here this ball bounces off at some unknown theta and some unknown speed where this ball is going to come down here at a theta that we do know of 35 degrees and this speed. And what I want to do is I want to find VF of ball number one 
And I also want to find out what is that theta that it bounces off at. The first thing that we need to do, guys, after we define these dimensions is we have to make sure that we are looking at the x and y directions independently. Okay, so I'm going to have some sort of x information and I'm going to have some sort of y. So in the x direction, we are going to have to have before momentums and we are going to have to have after momentums. All right, because we're going to look at the momentums that's conserved in each x and y direction independently. Now, if we look at the x direction for this ball here, it's in the positive direction, but it is going to be the opposite to 50 degrees. So before, for ball one, we are going to have to look at the sign of this. So we say that for ball one, and I'll put this in red so we know we're talking about ball one, we are going to have some m, we're going to have some v, but we are also going to have to have the sine of 50 degrees. That's going to be the component of the momentum before. All right, and for ball two in the, in the x direction, for ball two in the x direction, that is just going to be m to v. Because the beautiful thing is this is not at an angle, so it does not need any sort of components. Then we look after at the x components and see exactly what's going on here. But now ball one does not stay on the x axis. So now we have to look at the x component of this ball after and we see that's the adjacent or cosine to 35. So if we look at the ball two after, we see that we're gonna have some m, some v, and then we're gonna have some cosine of 35. And then after, we're going to have some resultant momentum of this. So we're going to have m v1 final. So if I start to substitute in now, we can kind of get a picture and see that we can solve for v1 final here. So we have 0.15 kilograms times 0.9 sine of 50 plus 0.26 times 54 equals... 0.26 times 0.7 cosine of 35 degrees. Degree signs are a unit. Plus mv1 final. Now remember, this is the final in the x direction because that's what we're solving for right now. So essentially what we're solving for here is we are trying to find what is this vector right here, v1 final x. Okay, so that's what we're going to be solving for here. And when I solve this out, I see that v1 final in the x direction is going to be 0.63 meters per second. We're going to keep this information for later. And we are going to do the exact same thing now for the y direction. Okay, so now we look at the y information for this and we say that for the y component here, all right, so this is the other piece that we need to solve for, this m, this v1 final in the y direction. We could transpose that over to here, and we see that that's going to be the opposite to this angle after. But what about before? Before, I have this angle right here, all right, the angle going downward. Now, remember, down is going to be negative plus the vector we were just talking about coming upward in the positive direction, m, v1, final in the y direction. So now what we have to do is plug in once again. We have 0.15 times a minus 0.9 cosine of 50 plus 0 equals 0.26 minus 7.7 7, sine of 35 plus 0.15 v1 final in the y direction. When I solve for all of that algebra, I see that v1 final in the y direction is going to be equal to 0.12 meters per second. But the question itself wanted to know what is v1 final total? So the resultant momentum, not these components. So what we have to do now is use a little a squared plus b squared and say, that if I have this 0.63 meters per second, 
and I have this 0.12 meters per second, what is the R or this resultant? Well, A squared plus B squared equals C squared. So C equals the square root of A squared plus B squared. Square root of 0.63 squared plus 0.12 squared is going to give us a final velocity of 0.64 meters per second. And this right here is the answer. Now, how do I find this angle right here? Well, if I know the adjacent and I know the opposite, right, we can transpose this vector. Then I know that the, the angle is going to be equal to the inverse tan of the opposite over the adjacent. So when I plug in my opposite, which is really 0.12, and my adjacent, which is 0.63, I see that the theta is equal to 11 degrees. Okay, so essentially what this question is testing for is your ability to separate x's and y's and know that each one of these momentum is conserved, p before is p after. And in the y direction, p before equals p after. That's the first major thing. The next major thing is not messing up these minuses. That's so important, which is why one of the first things I did was establish positive and negatives when I saw that there was gonna be arrows pointing in the opposite directions. Okay, that, let's take one last look at a two-dimensional problem, and this problem is gonna be called the ballistics pendulum. Okay, this type of question is gonna be called a ballistics pendulum. Essentially what it has is we have some sort of ceiling, some sort of fixed thing, and we have strings that are hanging down holding this two kilogram block at rest. This block is not moving, it's a wooden block, it's just hanging out. We're gonna have this bullet here with a mass of 0 0.003 kilograms and a speed of 1,000 meters per second approaching the block. And what's gonna happen is it's gonna go into the block and embed itself into the block, making the block kind of swing upward like a pendulum. All right, so it's gonna displace some distance if I draw the middle here middle of the block, not to scale, it is gonna move upwards at some delta y, gaining potential energy as it swings upward like a pendulum. So the two questions I wanna ask here are one, what is VF of the system? And two, how high does it go? Okay, and this is actually gonna test two things in one question, which is why I love it for the AP level. This is gonna test the law of conservation of momentum, all right, because this is going to be a total inelastic collision. And what this question is gonna do, this is gonna test the law of conservation of energy. Okay, so let's first work on the law of conservation of momentum and say, okay, in this situation, P before, equals P after. All right, now how many items are there before? Well, we have the bullet and we have the block. So we have P1, I'll call this object one, and this object two. So we have P1 plus P2 is now gonna equal the momentum of one plus two, because now we have this block that's inside of uh, the bolt that's inside the block, one and two, okay? So we look, how do we solve for this? Well, we just do M1V1 plus M2V2. Now this is a total inelastic collision, so now the mass is really M1 plus M2. Guys, please don't take the product, it's the sum, and then we have some sort of VF after. All I'm gonna do is I'm gonna plug in now, I'm gonna say 0 .003 kilograms times 1,000 meters per second plus, now this thing is initially at rest, so the momentum is gonna be equal to zero, that's awesome. And then we're gonna have 0 .003 kilograms plus the mass of the block after, which is two kilograms, I mean the mass of the block, which is two kilograms, and then we have some sort of V final. So we're gonna see that we have three divided by 2.003 equals VF. The VF of this particular block is going to be 1.5 meters per second. 
Now to find out how high it swings, I'm gonna to have to look at the law of conservation of energy. So the law of conservation of energy says that if I look at the work done by kinetic energy, and if I look at the work done of gravitational potential energy, and the work done by any non-conservative forces, that's gonna to have to equal the work done by kinetic energy, plus any gain potential energy, plus any work done of non-conservative forces. The great thing is this is frictionless, so we can get rid of this, and we can get rid of this. And also, we know that initially, this is at position zero, and this is gonna be position final. So initially, I am going to have no gravitational potential energy either, and when I get to max height, my VF is always zero meters per second. So if I have no speed after, I'm also gonna have no kinetic energy. So I can really simplify this to say the kinetic energy of the block, and this is just after the collision, is gonna be converted into the gravitational potential energy at the end. And we solve for this by saying 1 half mv squared, which is equal to mg delta y. But the thing is, I don't know the kinetic energy before, but I do know this speed, okay? So I do know the speed, and if we look at this formula, we find out that the mass before, because like I said, this is right after the collision, so the, the bullet is already in the block, and here the bullet is already in the block. So I can get rid of my m's here, and I can now say that the change in height, delta y, is going to be equal to one half, v squared over g, right? Because what I did is I, I divided both sides by g. So it's really going to be v squared over 2g. Now I just solved for the system after 1.5 squared divided by 2 times 10 meters per second squared. I'm going to use 10. Your course might use 9.8. That is really up to you. And I'm going to find out that delta y is equal to 0.11 meters. Guys, I hope this helps you solve for problems of the conservation of momentum in two dimensions. If you have any other questions, please let me know. If this video helped you learn something, please give the video a thumbs up, share with your friends so that they know that I'm making videos to help you guys out, and uh, enjoy the rest of your day.